Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen, uh, the mod guides uh, by Saiken. I uh, will put my shameless plug as always in here. If you enjoy the content and uh, take uh, something away from the guides, please leave a comment and consider subscribing to the channel. Today's topic is going to be uh, the uh, mechanics behind uh, the um, actual guide. I felt it was important to shine light on this as well because I'm getting a lot of questions about what does all of the what do all of the numbers mean and how is Advent essentially um, uh, doing overall and what can I do in order to uh, combat that. So that's going to be our topic uh, for today. It's uh, pretty important that you understand the core concepts of it, otherwise you're uh, probably going to be surprised. So. Let's go through all of the things in detail, uh, maybe even below 10 minutes in this case. So there are a couple of things that have changed with the, uh, uh, within the Long War mod. I mentioned it in a couple of the other guides already. Uh, the mod uh, reminds more about uh, on the strategy layer of a game of Axis and Allies or Risk, where Advent is always uh, doing something in the background, and you need to look out for the signs in order to really see what they are doing. Essentially, the uh, programming of Advent now has uh, given them control over global troops. Uh, you can see that here with the global strength of 33 legions. Uh, that means that uh, overall, across the 15 um, areas, uh, that uh, XCOM 2 has uh, as a world, um, there will be 33 legions of Advent. What is a legion? A legion is an artificial concept uh, that the um, uh, that Long War uses in order to say how much strength, troop strength uh, is there. Um, every area needs to have at least one legion. Um, so um, it's very similar to Risk, where you can't, um, the board game Risk, where you can't pull all of your um, troops out of a certain region. So that uh, means uh, that uh, if you uh, if you deduct um, uh, 15 from uh, this, you uh, have a leftover of 18 legions that start uh, evenly distributed across the globe, but that can be moved over time. And here's the bad news. As time progresses, you will see that the Advent global strength actually increases. Depending on the difficulty that you've taken, there will be more legions coming in that represent um, uh, otherworldly or out of space reinforcements of the aliens that come in more and more and more over time. So that is why it becomes more difficult um, to, to face Advent as time progresses. Now, you could make the argument, yeah, but so what? Like, what is that global strength? What does it even mean? Now, that goes back to a couple of core concepts uh, of Advent strength um, and the concept of vigilance. Let's take a look um, at our only region that we do have in this particular case, um, where it says strength 2, vigilance 2, force 1. Those three, I'll explain them in detail because uh, there are many questions about that. Strength is the number of deployed legions in this particular area. If you steer our, uh, trouble and if you stir um, enough trouble that Advent will eventually start to care, what is going to happen is that Advent will move more and more forces from the other areas into this area. The number of strength uh, so the number of available troops dictates a the detection radius uh, that they are going to have a tighter net of detection it will dictate the difficulty of infiltrating uh, missions high strengths essentially also means uh, that you will uh, that you are more likely to face larger packs and more difficult uh, uh, packs on the mission. So it's generally something that you do not want uh, to uh, let happen. The uh, game still uses the concept of a force rating that moves from 1 to 20. For those of you who are unfamiliar uh, with that term, XCOM 2 in its base game has a, a term called force rating. Starts at 1 in the lower level difficulties, 3 to 5 on legendary difficulty, and then moves in certain uh, preset intervals to 20, which is the highest rating. Uh, with an increase of force, 
uh, the packs that you can encounter um, will change, which is the reason why later in the game you never encounter the um, average Joe um, Advent Trooper with four hit points anymore. They basically faded out after a certain um, after a certain force level. So back to the concept of strength. Strength, a higher level of strength, means that you will receive packs that aren't officially. Uh, released in other parts of uh, the uh, world yet. So let's say the force rating of 9, for instance, would be the threshold when uh, mutants would come into play. Um, all, now all of a sudden, if you have an area with a high strength rating, even before the global um, uh, the global force rating um, uh, has uh, reached nine, maybe at a global force rating of seven or eight, you can already encounter a mutant earlier. So that's why it is undesirable uh, undesirable to have a high strength rating. Strength rating will increase the more missions you are doing and the more uh, actions you are doing and strength rating will likewise decrease the less it's uh, that is happening. If you're laying low for multiple months the strength rating essentially drops. Um, there's one particular uh, example where strength rating is even completely um, cut down uh, uh, which is when you are liberating an area. I'll come to the liberation in a second. Let's move on with the other two um, uh, ratings because they are important as well. Vigilance describes uh, the um, uh, the describes uh, the uh, yeah vigilance of Advent. Uh, if you are doing something in an area, they are getting uh, suspicious. So a high level of vigilance uh, indicates a high level of suspicion. Vigilance will always rise first, and strengths will convert. Uh, converge towards the vigilance level. You are very likely to see that the vigilance level after a couple of missions will uh, will rise substantially and vigilance dictates the mission pools that you can get, i.e. the types of missions that you can get. Whilst at the beginning you will get a lot of uh, rescue uh, missions that are relatively easy, um, later those mission types will no longer be available and you are only uh, forced to do harder uh, missions as time goes by. So that's uh, the uh, the idea behind vigilance. Vigilant again increases for things that you're doing and vigilance decreases as you're no longer doing uh, topics. It is not unheard of that if you're continuously beating Advent the vigilance rating will increase into the 20th or even up to 30 and then it you start having actual problem because uh, now all of the things accumulate over time. Uh, imagine that uh, Advent continuously gets uh, new reinforcements so their global strength rating will no longer be 33, it will be 40, it will be 45, it will be 50. So they do have a lot of legions available and if you do have a vigilance rating of 30 in one area and one in all of the other areas, then uh, Edwind will then uh, sure move most of its troops into uh, into that one area, uh, which is the reason why you need to liberate it at some point uh, to withstand the pressure. Uh, there are certain thresholds. I think it is a strength rating of seven or nine, uh, from which on Edwind theoretically can start to uh, crack down uh, the uh, resistance, which is uh, basically a terror mission, which you better damn sure not lose unless you want to lose that area and you're going to lose a lot of your resistance um, operatives as well. Uh, now the last uh, info here would be the force rating. Force rating is what I mentioned as the core force uh, rating that the game uh, gives you. In Long War it always starts with 1, it then moves up to 20 and that's essentially the baseline of, um, of alien strength that you're going to see. One thing that is um, special about uh, Long War is the force rating will uh, be pretty uh, unforgiving so there are no, n not, not many uh, recoverment, uh, recovery support. If you're falling behind a certain tech level you will still face more and more difficult missions um, and you 
just got to deal with it, uh, which is when it um, when many campaigns are basically over, uh, when the game snowballs into the direction of uh, the aliens. Now, finally, uh, my last topic would be liberation of uh, regions. Uh, there is uh, an exception to the rule um, of global um, uh, global uh, number of legions continuously increasing um, and um, advent strengths always increasing when you do stuff, which is when you're liberating an area. When you're liberating an area, there um, what happens in the background is all of the legions that are in this area will be cut in half. Half of the legions are te permanently taken off of uh, the table, which is great because it will reduce advent's global strengths. If you're continuously liberating areas, you will push down Advent's global strengths, so less overall legions to deal with. The other half uh, of uh, the legions that have been stationed in that area will be shunted towards uh, the uh, next uh, nearest um, adjacent area. Um, if there are multiple areas, they will be evenly distributed amongst them. Let's say uh, we had five, um, um, let's take six because I don't know if it rounds up or not with uh, half of the area, uh, uh, with halving the troops. Let's say there would be six legions in this area and I would, um, I would liberate the area. That means three are permanently taken off of the plate. Uh, so the global number of legions um, is actually de uh, deduct, um, uh, deducted by three. Uh, um, and one would be uh, placed in every adjacent area, one in Eastern Europe, one um, uh, in the Saudi Arabian region and one in uh, Central, uh, Central Russia or Siberia. Um, and that's basically uh, what would happen, which is something that you need to be keenly aware of because all of a sudden those areas that might have been quiet um, might become a bit more lively, specifically if there's only one area that is next to your area. I felt these were 10 minutes that probably uh, will help you to understand better what is happening behind the scenes. Watch out for those uh, little uh, indicators here. My suggestion as always is focus on one area where you are farming, maybe two depending on how many areas you have. Let the other areas just recruit for now um, and only do a mission once uh, every blue moon. Um, and then once you do uh, start to liberate uh, an area, make sure that you cover your bases so that it uh, uh, is not getting deliberated uh, by an alien invasion afterwards and essentially start one uh, tile at a, uh, at a time to grab back Earth and liberate all of uh, the areas if possible. That was it from my side. Thank you so much for your attention and see you in the next guide. Bye bye.